All right, hello. So, uh, we're gonna go through Substance Painter. Um, I'm at the university right now, uh, so that's why you can see my OBS when I bring it up and uh, everything's a bit different. Uh, so I'm gonna go through Substance Painter, show you how to get started, show you everything. Uh, we'll go through using a model that doesn't have a low poly and uh, doesn't have a high poly and we'll go for a model that does have a high poly. Um, all right, so what do we do? Okay, Substance Painter opens up, you close all the other windows that pop up and you just go to File and you click New. And the template we're, you should be using is, we're gonna put it in Unity, aren't we? So, uh, let's go here, pa, 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 it's, which one of these is it? Uh, Unity 5, I would go for this, Unity 5. Uh, all right, and then you choose your file. Uh, I need to go to, da, da, da. Yes, uh, and I'm gonna use table low, and I'm not gonna use a uh, high poly or anything like that. Okay, document resolutions, fine. Start with a higher resolution rather than a lower one. This can be changed. Uh, yes, yes, we're good. Okay, so change, uh, select your template Unity 5 and select your asset. Uh, click OK, and you're gonna get your asset. So what the what is all this? What is all this confusion happening here? What are all these windows? So first things first, let's make our workspace a little bit easier to use. Um, by pressing um, F1, F2, and F3 on your keyboard, you're gonna switch between the three different views. Uh, you have a 3D view and a 2D view, um, and then you have a 3D view and a 2D view. So I'm gonna stick to the 3D view for the moment with uh, F2, and you can see our asset has been loaded in, ready to use. Um, around the bottom here, you can see we have all our libraries. So here you have materials, you have tools, uh, you have uh, lots of brushes and stuff. Uh, I'm going to click on brushes for now. And uh, essentially this you can just leave at the bottom here. And on the side we have a, lot, a bunch of different um, information. Uh, so here we have you know our painting brush, our eraser, a few other things we'll be able to use. And at the top we have things about our brush and how the size and all this stuff. So this is pretty standard, pretty straightforward. You don't need to consider it too much. Uh, the main thing is your 3D viewport, your library, and this stuff. Now this is all really confusing and I don't like the default layout for this. So what you can do is you can grab your layers, you can drag them up to be on top of your texture set list because you never need both of these things at the same time. And then you can grab your texture set settings and grab them and put them on top of your paint because you never need these two things at the same time. So now your UI has been considerably uh, simplified. Um, so select your layers and your texture set settings. Um, your layers are essentially your layers of information. Um, it's kind of like a Photoshop layer. Um, and your texture set settings are essentially information about what your model has in it uh, besides the things that you're painting. So to start off with all the maps that are gonna exist in it to make it um, uh, better for texturing. Uh, and by default, it doesn't have anything here and we're gonna change that in a moment. Also in your texture set settings, you can change the uh, size of the textures that are being shown. Now there's nothing being shown at the moment, um, so this isn't gonna change anything, but this is something you can change all the time. You can change this at any point, um, so that's something there. Now your texture set list at the top here, this is essentially different bits of your model. So this is just one table, so there's not really separate bits. But if I had a, um, if I had, you know, if it was a character that had different clothing, if I had a, a different asset that was made up of different parts, or if I just wanted to split this table up into separate sections, um, those separate sections would show up here and they would be called whatever you've called this material in Maya, and right now this is using the default Lambert 1 material in Maya, so that's what it shows up as. Uh, go back to our layers here. Uh, here we have our paint properties, and this is essentially uh, information about the layer that we're on and the brush that we have. So you can change information about your brush size and your brush flow and all this stuff. We'll be using this later on. Uh, and lower down, you have information about uh, how the brush is gonna paint and all this stuff but we're actually not gonna be using our brush very much at all. So this is gonna change into information about the layer that we're gonna have. And all of that is gonna make sense um, when we get to it. Now, I'm gonna grab my Wacom pen here. 
Um, and you, something you can make uh, using a Wacom Pen easier with the software is if you open up your um, Wacom settings, go to your pen, the top button, instead of having it as double click, and you can do this on any tablet, um, have it as middle click. And so you have right click on the bottom, middle click on the top, and your actual pen tapping is a left click. So now I can rotate with my lower button and pan with my upper button. Uh, so I'm holding Alt on my keyboard here. It's kind of like Maya controls. So I'm holding Alt on my keyboard and I can pan with the pen. I can uh, zoom in and out with the lower button and I can uh, pan with the with the upper button. So rotate with the with the pen tap itself. Yeah, you get you get the picture, right? So doing that for your Wacom Mix working here a lot easier. So let's get started. Um, texture set settings. You want to open that up and you want to bake mesh maps. You need to do this before you start texturing, regardless of whether you have a high poly or not. So if you click bake mesh maps, we don't have a high poly at the moment. Uh, so we're going to use low poly mesh as a high poly mesh. Um, all of these maps that have an exclamation marks are things that we won't be able to create. So you can untick them. Um, and the rest of this stuff we don't really need to mess with because we don't have a high poly as I said use low poly mesh as high poly So we're going to use this as its own high poly and it's going to create some maps to help us texture um, Now output size this is the size of the textures that we're about to bake and this cannot be changed after you've made it If you want to change them you have to bake again so these um, won't be changed um, if you have a slightly weaker computer, maybe throw this down to 1024, but generally uh, 2048 is all right. It's better to work high resolution and then lower the resolution. So this table does not need a 2048 texture, but because we want to work in a higher resolution, we're going to start off with this. So we've ticked this box, we've left this as it is, we've unchecked the things that we don't need, and we're just going to click Bake Lambert 1. And this is going to go through and it's going to essentially generate these maps that you see appearing at the back here. Now, if we had a high poly, it would generate more maps than this. And we're going to do that later with the toaster. Uh, but for now, this is enough. And now we have these maps here uh, that are, we will be able to use for uh, texturing. Now, let's start texturing. Let's switch over to a paint tab and let's go up here. So I don't actually use these empty layers very much because they're very destructive. And what that means is when you do something, if you want to go back and change it, you can't. So I've just painted, you know, white on this. If I want to then change the color of what I painted, I can't. I've, I've put it down. It's permanent, right? So what I usually do when I start is I delete this empty layer and I create a fill layer. So up here you have a bunch of things you can create. You can create a fill layer. You can create an empty layer, which is the default one that we had. Um, you can create a folder as well and you can put layers inside the folder and you can do other stuff, which actually I've never used these other ones. Um, so let's just stick with fill layers and folders for the moment and you can delete stuff, of, of course. So I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to call this uh, base color, base colors, uh, and I'm going to add this fill layer to it. Uh, and actually I have to drag it in. So a fill layer is essentially just a normal layer but with a fill color. So if I click this fill layer, you notice we don't get all our brush options here. We just get uh, the stuff at the bottom. And here at the bottom, you essentially have the properties of this fill layer. And a fill layer essentially just fills the object with a color and other information. So here you have color, height, roughness, metal, normals. Um, and all of these things you can change for this fill layer. Uh, so I can change the base color as I wish. Um, I can change the height, which isn't going to change anything at the moment. I can change the roughness, whether it's rough or shiny, uh, and whether it's metallic or not. Um, you can also turn off whether this applies to this particular model. So for instance, if I have color on this one, and I'm just going to duplicate this with Control D, right? And on this one above it, I don't want to have color because I can now overall change the color because it's on top of it. I don't want to have color. I just want to change the roughness on this one. So if this one's only affecting roughness, this one's only affecting the color. So they're separate. So you don't usually do this exactly how I'm showing here, but the point is these toggle on and off. So let's go back to our base color. So I want this all to be wood uh, as a start. 
Um, so all of this, let's just for simplicity's sake and example's sake say it's all going to use the same color, the same type of wood, the same color, everything. So I'm going to put in a base color here, something like uh, some kind of pale yellow orange. And then I'm going to add another fill layer. And this time uh, I want it to affect only the color. So on this one, let's actually affect our roughness as well and give it a base roughness of something kind of rougher. Uh, let's hide this top one. Um, so give it a base roughness of something a bit rougher and make sure it's not metallic and this other stuff we don't need to touch. So the next one, I only want to affect color, not roughness or anything else yet. And I'm going to, instead of picking a color here, I'm going to click this. And this allows me to put a texture here. So if you click the name of whatever it is that you're uh, trying to change the property of, you can put a texture here. I'm going to put, um, so you can put all of this random different stuff. And when you put in a random texture, you can change the scale of the texture, um, you can change its position and its offset and all this stuff, rotation. But I don't want to do that right now. I'm not, um, use, I don't want to use this texture. Um, let me reset these things as well. So what I want to put in here is one of the textures that we baked, one of these things, and it's called curvature. So um, actually, let me bring this up a bit and let me go to textures. So you can see we have some, ooh, is it textures? Is it, uh, I'm just gonna type in curvature, right? And it shows up here. So uh, we have our base color. Let's add a secondary color, right? Something like darker, redder wood, okay? And now this uh, second fill layer, right? I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna add a black mask, all right? So a mask, is something that defines where this layer is gonna show up. And you can see this little black mask showed up next to it. Now, if you right click this black mask, you want to add a paint layer. And this paint layer is essentially paint. And this is defining where this layer is gonna show up. But the cool thing is I can go back to my layer and still make changes, right? So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this uh, black mask that I added a paint layer to, and I'm gonna add a fill layer to it. So this is a solid fill. So I can say it's completely white or completely dark, right? And on this fill layer, I'm gonna add my curvature. So now this, this map here, which is uh, outlining um, the, the details of my model, has now sh is now defining where this dark color shows up. And it creates a slightly interesting detail. Uh, and I can then come back here, I can change the color to something that suits it a bit more. Um, let's just go for something like this for now. And you can see that it's kind of adding a little bit of detail in there. I'm also gonna change its roughness so that it's a little bit less rough in, in those areas. And that's fine. And if you want, you can see the, what height does. So if you click height, you can go up or down and it's just gonna change the normal detail. Uh, I wouldn't use this on this, um, this layer, but just to show you what it is. So this is what I would do first. I would add these two uh, layers, essentially. I would add a base color, and then I would add a secondary color and add a mask to it with uh, our curvature to create this slight detail. Now, on top of this, you can right-click, and you can add a levels. And what a levels does is it allows you to change the, the range and the contrast of this layer. So you can kind of mess around with it and make sure that it either covers the details more closely or, or less closely. So I want it to kind of um, be stronger, but or rather be, be weaker, but still stay in those areas. So you kind of mess around with, oh, actually what else you can do is you can just invert it. So if I click invert, uh, what this is going to do now, it's going to leave these borders highlighted, but try and fill in the rest of the areas with that color. So you can see it's going to do something similar to this. And this is slightly more of an effect that maybe we want to go for. And I can go back to the color again, as I keep saying, you can change, uh, you can change it. But I actually want to add some height now, just a little bit, just to make this area look a bit higher resolution. Um, and now to add even more detail to just this secondary color, I'm gonna go back to this mask and you can see the difference with and without the mask. 
uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add another layer into it. So um, essentially how Substance Painter works is you create layers of color, then you define what areas do, uh, those colors affect, and on top of those uh, masks that you create that define where it affects, you can add more layers. You can add paint, you can add fill textures, um, uh, there's other special things like generators and filters that we're going to get to. Um, but essentially it's about stacking this information and all of this information is modularly separate from each other. Um, so it's very non-destructive. You can both go back and change stuff very often. And I can even go back and change like my initial texture that I was working on. So let's go back to this mask, right click it and add another paint. And this paint is going to be on top of it. Uh, let me change the color here. So this paint is going to be on top of this stuff. So it's going to be like separate from it, right? Uh, but see, what we're painting now isn't, um, isn't uh, a color. We're painting whether um, this is visible or not. We're painting the mask itself. So notice if you click on these two separate things, uh, the layer and the mask, they have separate adjustments. So if I click the layer with the color, I can add a separate paint to this. Um, and you can see that these are two separate parts, right? The color and the mask have their own uh, separate areas. And you can, as I said, toggle things off modularly. So we just added a paint to the mask that's going to say whether we see it or not. Um, so if you press X on your keyboard whilst painting a mask, it's going to switch between black and white. And you can see if I paint black, it means, okay, this part of the mask you're not going to be able to see. So this brown color is not going to come through. Paint it white it is going to come through. So I want to kind of emphasize these kind of borders. So I'm going to switch to black. I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to grab this uh, dirt, dirt brush, dirt one, right? And I'm going to go up on my paint settings and see now that because I'm on the paint layer and not on the layer itself, not on the fill part or anything like that, um, it changes these properties, right? So depending on what you have selected, the properties change. Remember when we just had our color selected, our fill layer, it just gave us information about the fill layer. When we click our masks um, properties, it shows, okay, this is that fill layer that we added the curvature to. This is the levels that we changed. This is our paint. So the paint is gonna let us change the brush. So we've selected our dirt brush, and now we're gonna go uh, on the paint layer. And we're going to change our uh, brush size to pen pressure. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it no pen pressure. I'm just going to select the flow and just bring it down to like <clears throat> 30. So now um, I can come in here with this dirt brush with this really light flow. And I can take away parts of this, um, uh, this to make it look like it's slightly worn. Now, I think this is too much, actually. So I'm going to make the brush a lot smaller. And I'm just going to lightly take off like areas on the corner to make it look a bit scuffed and just give it a little bit more detail. So all I'm doing is I'm taking away that brown color to reveal a little bit more of that um, yellow color. Um, but one reason that it actually looks a little more detailed, uh, which I'll show in a moment, is that the if we go back to our, let me... If you hold shift and, left and right click, you can change the light. Let's look at it from here. So if I go back to our brown color, uh, n when you layer this information of color, of height, of, of, of normal height detail and roughness, essentially you create different layers of information that when put together create an interesting effect. So right now there's a contrast between the color height detail and roughness of this uh, this part of the table so it creates a detail um, now actually to be oops flip them around uh, to be honest I wouldn't usually go in and on the base color start adding details like this uh, I would actually put it on top but I wanted to highlight to you straight away that you can um, come in here and essentially using these colors using these masks and using these different levels of detail and these modifiers like fill and levels and paints, you can just go nuts and start um, changing how uh, your model looks from the get-go. Now you can switch to some, uh, you can try out what these different brushes do to see if they have the, more of the effect that you want. The dirt one is kind of not really doing it for me. 
So I'm going to try and use this one. Let me check my texture set settings. We're at 2048, right? Yeah. Let me go. It's starting to look like, oh, there's a bit of scuffing under here. So it starts to look less boring. It starts to look less like a, um, a, boring, uh, a boring table, right? You're starting to add surface detail. Now, I'm going to stop adding these small details. I would usually cover, you know, the whole table. I wouldn't go nuts. I wouldn't be like, oh, it's a messed up table. No, but like adding some natural details is, is nice. Um, before I carry on, though, let's go to uh, Window. Let's go to uh, Views and go to Display Settings and bring up our display settings. So uh, these display settings, um, there's a few things that you should change here when you start. So first is the environment map. Panorama is all right, um, but something that's more uh, similar to how you see it in a game engine is the studio free lighting. So if you click this, it's going to change your lighting straight away. And the useful thing for this is it has a cold lighting and warm lighting. So it has a yellow light and a blue light, um, which gives a much more um, clear look of how you would kind of see things in a game engine because in a game engine you usually have more than one light and you don't usually see it the way panoramic makes it look and now look as well down here you can see how these normal details are affecting it much much clearer and you can see that actually they're way too strong so i need to come back here to my properties and reduce this height detail quite a bit just because it's really strong and you can see how the difference in roughness as well is really coming through this is starting to look more like leather um, than wood just because um, of the difference in materials here and maybe I need to come here and make this underside slightly maybe slightly more rough and this one even more so and then you still have the difference in the material but it's not quite so quite so powerful And if I went through to scuff the whole thing, you wouldn't notice it as much. But you can see how just changing this environment map has changed uh, the look of it. And you can mess around with the rest of them, but I would recommend working on Studio Free because that's most representative of what you see in the game engine. Um, is there anything else we need to do here? Uh, camera settings, material. I think it's fine. I don't think we need anything else in display settings. Uh, let's check one of the other windows, which is shader settings. And here, if you have a particularly powerful computer, uh, you can change the common quality to something higher. So right now I'm on low. You can increase it to like 60, 32 or very high. And this is just going to overall slightly increase uh, the level of lighting detail, but not by a considerably noticeable amount. So keeping it on minimum, uh, medium should be enough. And the rest I wouldn't really mess with. I would leave the rest as it is. So let's close that now. Okay, so we covered creating a base color and kind of using uh, solid colors and their different levels of detail, uh, painting on top of them, creating a fill layer using your uh, baked textures. So your curvature and let's go back to textures here. Your curvature map, very useful for outlining the details in your first two base colors. Uh, and we showed you how you can you know, mess with the levels and, and paint on top of them and use your brushes and change your flow settings so that with your, um, with your brush, you're essentially just going here and painting in and you can press X and then just paint a bit out and you know get surface details that way. Now let's do a bit more. Uh, let's close these base colors. Let's create another one and call another folder. Drag it out. And this folder we're going to call... Um, actually, actually, before I do that, let me show you something very cool. So we can take our base colors and let's call this base colors um, top, right? And now let's duplicate this and call it base colors uh, bottom. And I'm going to hide uh, the rest of these, just leave the top for now. So in this folder we have different layers and the different layers we can add masks and stuff something that's very cool is we can add a mask to the folder itself as well so I can right click this folder and add a black mask and now it doesn't affect everything or I can add a white mask and it's gonna affect everything so I usually like starting with a black mask and I can now add 
properties to the folder's mask, which is very, it's, it's great because I can add, essentially you can have layers and layers of properties. So I'm gonna go to this black mask and I'm gonna add a paint layer because I want uh, this to only affect, uh, let me change my brush here to a basic. I said a basic, thank you. I want this to only affect this top part of the table and the bottom part we're gonna make a different color. But this is gonna take forever painting this in by hand, right? So instead of kind of painting this mask all by hand, you can go here to the side and select this fourth one down. It's a little square with an arrow. You can click this. And this, by default, just allows you to assign a color value to an individual polygon, right? So by default, the value is one. You can go somewhere in between if you want. Uh, but if you switch this to this cube, it's going to do it to an entire object mesh. So all this top is one separate object, right? One separate mesh. So if I select this one and I set this to one, it's gonna set the color value of one for this mask, so white, on this whole top of, uh, top tabletop. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna only affect the tabletop, right? So that's done. You can switch back to your paint if you wanna see a little, without all those lines. And now this bottom colors, I'm gonna make this visible and I'm gonna add a black mask to this one with a paint. And the paint, I'm going to make effect only these objects underneath, right? Uh, so what was the point of that? So now I can go back to, essentially, this is just the top, this is the bottom. And I can go to the bottom one, and I can change the color of this to have a slight variation. So that now I have a table that has slight color variation and isn't all exactly the same. Now I made that a very slight color variation, so maybe let's go to our this one and make that one slightly more yellow, because I want this one to be kind of the more, the less clearly wooden one. Um, now this is obviously me just messing around to show you the different features, show you the fact that you can grab a folder and add a mask to it, and you can add other things to this as well. Um, not necessarily best for this model, but still a cool thing you can do. Um, and very useful in different situations. Let's, uh, I'm kind of annoyed now. I want to make this look slightly better <laughs> because um, like I don't have a plan going into this model. I'm just like, oh, I'll make a thing. Um, yeah, uh, something we can do instead, actually. Let's, okay, let's do, let's do this. Let's make this quite brighter, something like this, right? And let's delete these two black masks. Or, or rather, we don't need to delete the mask. We can just delete this paint layer. So I'm going to delete the individual paint layers, right? So this one is the brighter one, right? So I'm going to right click. Uh, I'm going to go to its mask and add a paint layer again. And I'm going to grab the uh, polygon selection tool. And I'm going to add polygons to the areas that are just, just the, the faces, the polygons, the areas that are going to be cut wood. So this is where, not where you see bark, but where essentially it's been cut. Um, and it's a bit tricky to figure out where that would be, but these areas seem all right. Bum, bum. So I'm gonna do it to the parts that aren't flat, essentially. Um, if you wanna delete an area that you're doing it on, you can reduce this color thing down to zero, and it's going to take away. Now, if it's getting harder to see, um, up here you have this little material drop down. So right now I'm seeing the entire material, but I can switch this to seeing just the mask. And now it's just showing me what's visible and what isn't visible. So what has the mask applied and what doesn't have the mask applied. And this is very useful. And you might've accidentally hit it if you've pressed C on your keyboard, because C cycles through uh, all the different views that you have in this drop down. So I'm gonna go to mask, I'm going to get rid of uh, the inner cut wood on some of these that I've accidentally clicked. And I'm just going to quickly apply it to uh, the other parts of this. And I'm going to use my mouse for this instead of that because I don't need uh, pressure sensitivity. I just need to click. Uh, and you can press X on your keyboard to switch between 0 and 1 here. So let's switch to, switch to 1. Just put it on these cut areas. Can't see. Put that on here because that's a cut piece. This is a cut piece. 
um um let's look at the inside do something like this okay i think i think that's most of it oh this side right so those are those ones those are these ones uh, and I'm going to do the whole one for these ones, because they're all kind of cut entirely, really. Um, and then I'm going to do just this. Oh, that's going to take forever. Doing the sides for this one. Uh, so something you can also do instead of clicking is you can drag, which I just remembered. You can kind of drag where you want this to apply. And I want it to apply in all of this. And I've scrapped all the borders, right, which is what we wanted. And I'm going to grab these tiny borders here as well oh that's gonna be annoying to do uh, but fear not because if you press f3 or f1 on your keyboard you can see your 2d view and i can just come in here and select those areas from the 2d view which is so much faster and maybe i should have done this earlier uh and it's like this whole area so i know where my uvs are corresponding to the model so i can use this view be quicker so let's go back to our material so we can see what we've done and click brush so we get rid of that wireframe and you can see that only the areas that are going to be cut wood have now shown up right now i want all the other areas to be affected by our other color but i don't want to go through and paint everything again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, right click on the mask we just made and click copy mask and then i'm going to click the other mask that we're going to have for the darker wood right click it and click paste into mask and now it's overwritten everything essentially but i want to invert it so i'm just going to right click it and click invert mask and it's going to reverse what it's done right so now we're essentially kind of um uh overwritten what we're affecting uh in here uh, so this one has been reversed to become this one right and now you can see we have different colors for different parts of this wood again not beautiful <laughs> but it's a start it's our base color let's move on i want to show you uh two more things i want to show you generators and i want to show you um oh gosh what's this that was the tablet uh example detail example so i want to show you generators and i want to show you um uh using using layers as well uh using uh textures so let's put in this um, filler and we're going to call this wood, right? And here in our textures, we have a lot of presets that we can use. So I'm just going to type in wood and nothing comes up. So instead of textures, let's go to alphas. So alphas are these black and white images I've told you about before. And let's just type in wood. Hmm. What about procedurals? Wood. Okay, we're getting some stuff here. So you're getting some like procedural textures for wood. So let's, 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 uh, let's get rid of all this stuff that are on top of here. And let's just add color. And let's just make it yellowy-ish, something like this. And I'm gonna add a black mask here. And I want this black mask to have a fill layer. So either white or dark. And I'm gonna put this procedural wood texture, oh, uh, wood thing on top of it and this is going to give me a procedural mask that i can change on top of pretty much everything now um i think since what do we want this to affect we want this to affect the, not the the cut areas isn't it so let's put this on the cut areas in the folder for the cut area and see what this does um okay so it's kind of affecting these areas it's pointing the wrong direction pointing up rather than sideways. So let's see if we can select this mask, select our um, wood and rotate it 90 degrees. And now you can see why having all our UVs uh, pointing in that same direction was important because now the wood is actually pointing in the same direction as well. And I wanna change the scale because this is a bit too big, something like this. Okay, excellent. Uh, and here you have a few things you can change, like the number of knots um, and the hardness. So how strong these wood grains are going to be, right? So using this procedural texture, uh, I've been able to add a procedural detail of wood grain here. And I can go back to the color and again, I can adjust the color a bit, uh, a bit wider. 
and I can adjust also the height now so I can make it stick out more or less uh, and I'd like to stick out inwards just a wee bit it's a teeny tiny bit Uh, and then I want the roughness also to be a little bit shinier in this area so that um, what was it there so that when the light shines on it there's an actual difference in the detail where should we position our lights to be able to see that which is generally not very shiny. Um, but you can see we have these really hard like transitions here, right? That go into this thing, that go into this, uh, this map here. So essentially, I think what we can do, because this map is entirely overriding the, the underside here, what happens if we, what happens if we hide the mask for, for this? Okay, so if we hide the mask for this, essentially it starts to let that procedural texture go over everything and change the height information, but it also um, uh, doesn't change the color. So what I want to do is let's take this mask, uh, copy mask, and let's hide it from the entire group and just apply it to this wood because we want this wood to only be here and the color doesn't really change too much on the other one. So let's uh, paste... Well, something you can do is you can actually just put this in a folder and call this uh, wood grain. And then you can uh, add a black mask and paint this one that we hid into here. You can do that. And now this only affects this area. Um, but what we can do is essentially... Hmm, there's a few things you can do here. You can like come in here with a brush and kind of break this up like I was doing on the borders here to make it so that this is actually going through a little bit. Uh, you have to do it so that it actually affects the this, uh, this color as well. Because if I hide this top color now, you can see that this is kind of like sitting on top of it and we almost don't really need it. Uh, so on here, on this uh, wood grain, you can add on top of it another paint layer so that they're separate from each other. And if I go to brushes, let me do some stuff here. You can get like some, some scuffing so that it has more of a natural transition into the table and doesn't just look like you've essentially um, cut it off, right? Let me choose a different one. Uh, where's the rice? There was a rice one. Rice. Yeah, rice brush. Very cool. Essentially just bits of rice, but it's really nice for creating these kind of uh, surface details. Yeah, should be fine. Why is it only pointing in a certain direction? Mm, very odd. Uh, but essentially, yeah, you can use a brush to kind of soften out these details. Um, and that was showing you that you can use alphas and, and procedural textures on top of masks. Um, on top of masks to essentially create uh, further details and indent them with your height information uh, to create further resolutions and detail. Um, and you can go in by hand and adjust this yourself a little bit. Okay, uh, last thing before I uh, essentially let you go because um, this turned into a very long video, but also I, can, I know it's not well, it's not edited and it's all just rambling essentially. Uh, but hopefully I'm covering a lot of ground and you can see how I'm kind of doing some stuff. Uh, now let me go to, uh, okay, detail example. Let's put in, um, let's just put in a solid color uh, and get rid of all the other information. Let's just make it bright red so we can see it. And on the solid color, I'm going to right click and instead of adding a paint or a fill layer or anything else, I'm going to add a generator. And a generator is kind of this preset sort of detail. So let's add dirt. So you can click the this generator button. Let's click dirt. And oh, so this has added dirt to the color, which is not actually what I wanted. So let me undo this. 
and leave this fill layer just as red and add a black mask as well. I use masks for everything because essentially this already gives you all the information you need. It gives you roughness, it gives you color, and it gives you height information. I don't need to mess with this beyond what it is. Uh, what I do need to do is define where it appears. And to do that, I use alphas, I use textures, I use um, uh, generators. So let's click this black mask and right click and add a generator and select the generator we want. We want a dirt, right? And now you can see it's doing something different. It's using the dirt that it was going to generate as just a way to decide where this red color shows up. Um, now let's change this red color to, uh, I don't know, uh, should we make dirt or should we make some actually where the, let's do dirt first just since that's what it's called and make something kind of like this Let's increase the height information. So it actually sticks out a little bit. It looks very gross uh, And change the roughness. So it's very rough because dirt generally doesn't uh, Isn't very shiny and you can see how this is creating a level of detail because if it was the same shininess You wouldn't see the light recognize it as sh such because the dirt is dark you can see the shine coming underneath it. So that's a nice way to kind of add some detail. Uh, now, currently, the dirt is not looking how we want it, and it's affecting the whole asset and making it look absolutely revolting. Uh, and not revolting as in, oh, it looks dirty, but as in, this just, just doesn't look like it's been textured very well. So let's go back to our mask and our dirt generator. And you can change the dirt level. So let's say we want it quite bad. And you can change the contrast as well. So if you want it to really stick in there, um, so let's do something like this. Uh, you can change the grunge amount, so how much it shows up. Um, and you can change uh, blending for various things. Uh, edge masking changes whether it shows up on edges or not, but sometimes it doesn't uh, do that. So uh, this is what it looks like by default, absolutely revolting. Let's change the color a bit more because this looks like blood and it's kind of gross. Uh, something like this. Uh, yeah, let's do something like that. Oh, that looks even worse. <laughs> let's. Uh, you can decide to make it paint if you want, but let's let's just leave this as very very dark, actually, something like this. Okay, so this looked crap, right? So let's go to our dirt generator and on top of it, add a um, essentially define where this dirt shows up. And there's a few different ways we can do this. Uh, we can, on top of, essentially just put this in another folder. And you can have folders within folders. And I can select this uh, grunge folder that says frunge. I can add a black mask to that and then add a paint to that. And then I can paint in, grab a decent brush, uh, I can paint in where this effect occurs. And notice I can't paint in more of the effect. The effect's already been decided. I'm just deciding where it shows up. So I can, like if this table has been sitting in the garden too long or something, I can be like, oh, well, this is happening. Obviously, you don't need to use this for dirt alone, um, but just as an example for a use case scenario. But um, really, I don't ever, <clears throat> excuse me, use the dirt layer at all, to be honest. Um, because essentially there's very few situations that you need it. Why would you have a dirty table, right? So let's try and use another one and give you an idea of some of the other things that these layers can do. So let's change this to something brighter and yellower and go here and essentially delete this dirt layer. And let's add another generator. And this time we're going to use um, Metal Edgeware. And this is going to add where to the corners of your asset and to the corners of detail. And by default, it's obviously way too strong. So I'm going to reduce or increase the contrast a little, actually. Um, and change how it's kind of blending. All right. Or you could even kind of uh, reduce the, uh, the wear contrast and increase the wear level and have it go everywhere. And just as we did before, uh, on your, um, uh, the group that you can put this entire layer in, uh, and this group is entire inside this entire layer, you can essentially just paint where you want this to appear so that you have a little bit of detail showing up in specific areas. Um, and you can show where essentially there's been uh, edge wear this way. Now, you don't, obviously you don't need to use just edge wear. You don't need to just break all your assets and make them look really crap and horrible. 
Um, but this is one of the things that you can use and one of the things that you can uh, work with. I have some kind of issue here. For some reason, it doesn't want to go over this, and I don't know why. Um, if I was working on this model properly, I'd take some time and make sure that I don't have this issue, because essentially, I should be able to paint more clearly here. Um, maybe it's just because um, the metal edge wear is kind of like pretty, pretty um, not going over those areas. So that's one, one way you could do it. You can kind of like make metal edge wear go everywhere and then uh, on a separate folder decide where it will appear. Something else you can do if we don't want to use the separate folder and we don't want to have metal edge wear everywhere, we can reduce the wear level to just barely enough just barely pretty much what we need as a starting point and obviously if you're working on metal and stuff this will make a more specific effect for that um, and then on top of this great uh, generator we can add another paint layer and paint stuff in by hand and now you can see I'm getting this effect on top much more clearly um, something I like to do is um, I like to like paint with the dirt brush and then press X to turn it black and paint away with the dirt brush so you're kind of painting in and painting away and this creates a slightly more natural transition for what you're doing. Um, so, okay, we did we did kind of that stuff. Um, essentially, the rest is you, you kind of go in by hand. And you're kind of uh, putting in details. You're putting in... Um, let's reduce the height, actually, because we want it to go in, not outwards. Yeah, because before the dirt was sticking out, wasn't it? Whereas now we want this kind of to be broken off. Uh, and... Yeah, we'll leave it as pretty rough. Maybe like top of this table is sheen. So let's go back to our color and change this to maybe like one of those uh, old terrible like school desks that are very like shiny. And this, this is pretty shiny. Uh, and on top of this color, let's just add a bit more color in this area then. Um, let's add a... Um, let's add another layer on top of this one. Uh, and we want it to only affect this area, so we want it, hmm, how should we do this? Let's just, let's just add the, the color details for it. So on top of this color, uh, I want this to be a slightly different color to this one. So when I'm picking my color, I can select this eyedropper and hold it pressed and select this same color. Uh, and now I can just darken it a little bit. And then on top of this, I'm going to add a black mask like I always do. And I'm going to add a fill layer. And on this fill layer, I want noise. So I'm just going to click on all because I don't want to mess with it. And I'm just going to type in noise. And it's going to bring me all the possibilities for noise. Also, if you select all, it's probably going to give you better results for everything. So let's go to wood. And you get a bunch more stuff for wood. And you get some preset materials, which I don't like to use as well. Uh, but let's go to noise. Don't use the preset materials, I will know. <laughs> so let's go to noise, let's pick up any of these noises. Um, or grunge as well, you can type in grunge. And it's gonna give you like different sorts of wear, scratches, it's gonna give you different scratches. So let's use this for example, drag it in, and it's going to give me a pre procedural kind of scratches layer. And if I go back to the color, you can see that like I can change the color of the underside table. I'm kind of going for that shiny uh, desk that I was talking about, right? Uh, and you can see the effect here is most. Uh, but again, it looks like <laughs> it looks like from some kind of a post-apocalyptic game or something, which isn't really um, what you need to do. But you see the difference that the roughness does. If it was the same roughness, you wouldn't see the difference. And reducing the roughness uh, and even the height changes how much you see. Now, obviously, you don't want to do this, but this stacking of information really makes uh, the thing come through. Now, the reason I don't like uh, currently what this is doing is because it's affecting this, these parts of the model, and I don't want it to affect those. Um, and there's a few different ways you can make it not affect those. I'm just going to grab paint. I'm going to grab the um, selection, set it to zero, just look at it from this uh, perspective and just make sure it doesn't affect those areas uh, and actually I need to do that for the bottom one as well because it's doing it there as well so I'm going to add a paint and just make sure it doesn't affect these areas and you suddenly get slightly more oops ah I can't select this polygon come on man maybe it's from the top one yeah 
There we go. And this one should be like this. This one should be like this. Uh, something's happened here. I've, I've messed something up uh, and it doesn't want to show up. But essentially this is more realistic because it looks like it's cut wood. Um, all right, so that was generators and you can use generators for, for things like that as well. Now, clearly not all of you are making post-apocalyptic furniture. In fact, none of you are and I don't want to really see post-apocalyptic furniture. Um, try and use these different tools to achieve the look that you're going for, whether that's a fancy piece of wood, whether that's a realistic thing. Use reference. Plan the texture that you're going to make. I have done no planning for this particular texture. I'm not using any reference. I'm just freeballing it because I want to show you the different features, not necessarily how good this table can look, which is currently not very. Um, I think these things look like chocolate wafers, actually. Not good at all. Um, but yeah, that's essentially how you get started with Substance Painter. Um, you uh, create base colors, you use masks and you put layers inside the masks. You can use textures and procedurals to uh, give detail to the masks so that they show up in certain places. Uh, you can use alphas and you can use grunges as well to further enhance those masks so that the colors that you're painting, the colors that you decide for underneath and the shininess and the all that stuff that you're defining underneath um, is essentially done, uh, is essentially um, more interesting. It comes through in a more interesting way when you're changing the masks and stuff. Now, uh, before finishing up, I will show you two things. One is I'll show you how to export textures, and then I'll show you uh, how to bake the maps for your low and high poly. So first, exporting textures. I have no idea how this happened. I'm just going to ignore it for a moment. Um, so exporting your textures, you want to go to File, um, Export Textures. And then you leave it as Unity 5 Standard. You change Dilation Infinite to Dilation Transparent and change your pixels to 2. And also you choose the texture sets. Currently we only have one. You can drop it down and it's going to show you everything it's going to export. Um, okay. And you change the size. So for this, I will just do a 1024. Um, and then you just click, uh, you choose where, and you choose the file type. So we wanted to save it uh, somewhere. Just go desktop. Let's go uh, downloads for now, because I'm in the uni computer. And you want to use a Targa. Right? And then you just click export, and it's going to export them. Open the folder, and here they are all of that stuff. Uh, you can see some of them are put together. So <clears throat> this one is metallic and smoothness put together. This is albedo and transparency put together. So it's combining a few of the maps. Um, if you don't want to do that, if you want every map to be completely separate, when you go to export textures, instead of Unity 5 standard metallic, just use PBR metal rough, and that should export every single one separately. Not packed together as the Unity 5 one does. Um, so if you want to preview this stuff in Sketchfab or do stuff like that, um, PBR Metal Rough might be better for you to use. Um, but I would recommend Unity 5 since we're going to be using Unity uh, to present these. OK, so that was it. Uh, that was pretty much all the texturing stuff. Uh, let me show you quickly how to do a toaster. And then I'll say, see you later. Oh, how long has this been going? Let me check. Uh, an hour, lovely. Well, you have a three hour lecture, so <laughs> should be okay. Um, file, uh, pa pa pa, new. I'm not gonna save this. Why would I? <laughs> Why would I? This weird wafer table. So let's use Unity 5. Let's select our file. I'm gonna go for toaster low and just click OK. Discard. All right, it's thrown in our toaster, our lovely. Um, not detailed enough toaster. I could have put a plug socket. I could have done loads of stuff. Anyway, uh, then you, have, if you remember, you go to texture set settings and you click bake mesh maps. But this time, we're going to, uh, instead of clicking use low poly as high poly, we're going to go in here and high definition meshes. And we're going to add the meshes that we want. So we just have one. We have toaster high. We want that. 
And now all of these are gonna bake. So normal map, ID, all of this stuff. We don't have an ID map, so I don't need that. And I don't need a thickness map. That's for characters. Um, and the rest is fine. And you can just bake maps. And now you can see it's baking a normal map. It's baking lots of stuff. Ambient occlusions and roughness. Oh, it's just great. And now we have this. And now it's put in all those details that I had from my high poly. How great is that? That's what we wanted, right? Sick. Great. We have those. Um, and that's it. That's that's the only difference. All you need to do is bake mesh maps and put that in here. And now you have your high resolution details previewed on your model uh, whilst you're texturing, which is really nice. Um, and everything will be packed together and exported into the final maps that you texture. Um, all right. So that's everything that I want to cover for, um, for the Substance Painter. I know it's very quick. I know it's very dirty. Um, I know it's not like really using any kind of super finalized, super excellent assets and showing you how to texture well. This wasn't supposed to show you how to texture well. This is supposed to show you how to um, just open the software, put your model in, what all the different functions do and all of that stuff. For how to texture well, I can share with you many, many resources. You don't need me to essentially go through these models. Um, I can, and I will for certain things, uh, for certain things that I know you're gonna be doing, for certain kind of uh, textures that I know you're gonna be making. Uh, but the point of this video wasn't to do that. It was just to show you how the software works um, and what it does and what all the windows do and what how the hell all these layers work, all right? So I hope that was useful. I hope that was all right, um, and it was very long, I, I uh, understand. All right, so that's it. Have a good one. I hope uh, you use it well, and if you have any issues, let me know. Bye-bye.